There's a lot to say, and so because there's a lot to say, I'm going to get straight to it. So let me say, inshallah, if Allah allows me to explain what I want to explain uh, correctly and properly, inshallah. The Quran is not made up of sentences. Okay? So sometimes there's one ayah has many sentences in it. And sometimes there are many ayat and they comprise of one sentence together. And sometimes uh, you can see a sentence end uh, on different, like you can have a long sentence or a short sentence, right? So when you start a new sentence, the grammatical rules start over depending upon where you put the full stop for the sentence. And what the Qur'an does, Qur'an leaves it up to the thinker. Okay, where does this sentence end? And sometimes, as I will show you, if there is a sentence that connects with the passage before it, and it also connects with the passage after it. So if there is a, there is an ayah, it connects with before and it connects with after many of those times there will be a variation in the words that connect and make it clear it's connecting with the top and it's connecting with the bottom so that that interlocking sentence so to say as I will show you that interlocking sentence can be seen as part of both and this is part of the dynamics of Quran and one of the reasons the Prophet allowed m different variant readings, even though there's one Qira'atul Amma. Qira'atul Amma is Hafs bin Asim. That's the standard reading, which the Mufassirin have also talked about. And when, for example, Imam Sayyuti talks about Qira'atul Amma, he's talking about Hafs bin Asim. But he borrows, like many other scholars, from other qira'as, other recitations, other readings. So now let's look at an example of what I'm talking about. And this is not a basic class of Qur'an. This is more like an intermediate level. And so if this is the first time you're hearing this, then please uh, be patient until I make the issue very, very Qur'anically clear. Okay? So... So we're going to take Surah Yasin as our first example before we go to Surah Zuhruf. So the issue is, inshallah, clear over there also. And then we're going to look at the different tafsirs and the different tawjihat, different explanations, different ways of looking at the ayah. And that will, inshallah, give you a better understanding of how to, uh, uh, how to understand the Qur'an and how deep this whole subject of studying Qur'an really is. So, بَعْدَ عَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ now, where does the sentence end? Yasin or Quran al Hakim, in in kalam min al Mursalin, ala sirat mustaqim. So, many people will say, "Oh, okay. Well, Yasin, by the wise Quran, that you're definitely the messenger of Allah. You're upon the straight path. That is the end of the sentence." Or you can also say, Yasin, and by the wise Quran, you're indeed the messenger of Allah. You're upon the straight path. This is a revelation from Al-Aziz Al-Rahim, meaning Allah. Okay, this can also be the ending of the sentence. But because ayah number five could be connected with ayahs one through four as part of one point, one sentence. Jumla means one point or one sentence. Okay, but ayah number five also connects with ayah number six. Tanzil Al-Aziz Al-Rahim. Revelation from Al-Aziz, the one who is all-powerful, Ar-Rahim, the one who is merciful, لِتُنْزِرَ So that you warn a people. لِتُنْزِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أُنْذِرَ آبَاؤُهُمْ So you warn a people whose forefathers were not warned. فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ And they were heedless, they didn't know any better. So is it تنزيل العزيز الرحيم Revelation coming down from Al-Aziz Ar-Rahim لِتُنْزِرَ So you will warn, you will warn with the revelation, because this is what they're denying, this is a further conversation which I'm not going to go to right now. But if you stick to the basics, ayah number 5 fits with ayah number 6 and 7 and 8 and 9, just as ayah number 5 fits with 4 and 3 and 2 
and 1. I has 1. So now, ion number 5 becomes like an interlocker between the passage before and the passage after. Sometimes when this happens, there is a difference of opinion, not difference of opinion, rather, astaghfirullah, not difference of opinion. There are, there's more than one qira'a, more than one recitation that was allowed that alludes to this phenomenon. That tanzeel al-aziz al-rahim, for example, is one qira'a, which is the qira'atul amma. The normal qira'a is tanzeel al-aziz al-rahim. But there's another qira'a of this which has a little bit different meaning. The normal recitation points more to the fact that ayah number 5 is fitting with ayah number 6, 7, 8, and 9. But there's another qira'a that is tanzeelul aziz rahim that then fits with more with ayah number 4 and the ayahs prior to that. So now, having said this, now let me show you what the Mufassirin say. Now having understood this, when the ayah is saying, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ versus وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَّامَةُ السَّعَةِ and over here, تَنزِيلَ الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمِ versus تَنزِيلُ الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمِ Now this will inshallah help you understand one aspect of the reason and the dynamics of why there are variant reading, readings of Qur'an and this is a subject that needs to be better understood. But having said that, let us inshallah continue. Okay. Qawluhu Ta'ala. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, Ibn Adil, his uh, tafsir book, which is one of the absolutely phenomenally great tafsir books. Okay. Uh, he says, Tanzil, Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim, Kiraat, Kiraat Nafi'ah, uh, Wa Ibn Kathir. And he mentions that this Kiraat, Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim, Okay, over here, okay. قوله تنزيل العزيز الرحيم قراءة نافع. Okay, now this is the قراءة of نافع. وابن كثير. And Abu Umar. And so on and so forth. And this is with what we usually call in Arabic language with نسب. Okay, but then he says, uh, Abu Bakr bin Rafa'ah. But Abu Bakr, the, the, the one who has a chain going directly to the Prophet, he says, Tanzilu ala annahu khabarul mubtada. Okay, so this Tanzilu goes back to the Yasin wal Quran al Hakim. Okay, Tanzilu al Aziz al Rahim. So now, even though Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim, obviously everything in Quran interconnects, so that's known and that's understood. But over here it is pointing, there is a specific qira'ah that was allowed by the Prophet that points to the fact that this is connecting to the before. And the general qira'ah is also specifically connecting to the port part that is uh, under it. Because in the Arabic language the root words are the same, so the meanings in its in its uh, in its in its you can say variant holds the general meaning as well as the specific meaning. Okay, so keep this in mind what I just said. Because the root words are the same, the variant of that word holds both its normal or normally uh, or the qiraatul uh, amma the normal recitation meaning as well as its specific meaning. And I, we can give many examples of that and sometimes the this is not the reason the interlocking is not the reason for the change of the qira it's other reasons which i'm not going to go into today but this is one aspect of why there's allowance of more than one what you can say qira or uh, you can say uh, the ahraf uh, it can also be called okay so let us now continue and uh, again uh, Imam Baydawi, who is one of the great, great, absolutely awesome Mufassirin of Quran, uh, he says about Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim, the ayah in Sutul Yasin, bin Nasab, meaning it has a fatha at the end, ala mustar. And then he says, bin Rafa, and it also has Rafa. So instead of Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim, it is Tanzil al Aziz al Rahim. 
So I think everyone now understands the point here. Now when we go into, uh, and now, okay, so uh, in in A'rab in, al-Quran, in, in Nihas, it says, Tanzil al-Aziz al-Rahim, hadha kiratu al-Ahlul Madinah. This is how the people of Medina read it. Tanzil al-Aziz al-Rahim. Wa kufiyun and others, okay, it was all with Nasab. But Abu Ja'far, for example, and others have been mentioned by other scholars, the Rafa'a. They read it with Rafa'a. They read it as Tanzilul Aziz al-Rahim. So depending upon your mood, depending upon how you see the sen the uh, where the sent because the ayahs are not sentences. One many ayahs can make one sentence, or one ayah can have many sentences. So now the grammar will slightly change and the a'rab will slightly change. Even though there's standardized through the different ihraf, they're standardized through the different qiraas, because we only read according to it it's tawqifi. It is according to what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this all goes back to the Prophet. Okay. So now, let us now look at the verse that we're actually going to study today in this issue. Okay, This is the issue that people have uh, not completely understood and I would like to share with you. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zuhraf, ayah number 61, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ وَإِنَّهُ and he is or it is لَعِلْمٌ He is the knowledge لِسَّعَى for the hour. Okay. So, this is one qira'a and this is qira'atul al-amma. This point I will now share, share with you from the perspective I just showed to Yasin. But let us first read uh, what the different fuqaha or mufassirin have said. Okay. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ مُرَادْ بِهِ الْقُرْآنِ وَبِذَلِكَ uh, And then the meaning of this, إِنَّهُ it is لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ It is, it is لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ The knowledge of the hour, the who مُرَادْ بِهِ الْقُرْآنِ He says, the Mufassir says, the Murad here is the Qur'an. The Qur'an is the knowledge of the hour. Okay, so this is what one of the Mufassirin, they have said about this. Uh, and then he also gives different proofs for that, which I'm not going to. Uh, and then what does he say? Ma'na tahqiq. It is known, it is meaning a valid point. And al Quran al Mulisara. The Quran is the knowledge of the hour. أَنَّهُ جَعَ بِالدِّينِ الْخَاتِمِ The Qur'an, it, it is the Qur'an that comes with the last deen. لِلشَّرَاعِ وَلَمْ يَبْقَى بَعْدَ الْمَجِيءِ الْقُرْآنِ إِلَّا إِنْتَذَارِ الْإِنْتِحَاءِ لِلْعَالِمِ And nothing will remain after the coming of Qur'an except for waiting for the ending of the universe. وَهَذَا مَعْنَى لِمَا رُوِيَ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ This is the meaning that has been narrated from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Me and the hour have been raised like this. Okay, like this. Uh, and so this was the opinion of one of the uh, great scholars, Ibn Ashur, Rahimullah. Okay, in his tafsir, Tahrir wa Tanweer. Okay. He says, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ And it is the knowledge of the hour is referring to what? It is referring to the Qur'an. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, the verses themselves. Okay. And then we'll look at the other narrations. But I would like to start from giving you the background a little bit. Uh, The Prophet ﷺ has been giving da'wah for many years. And now they have come up with many arguments. The people, they argue, they like to argue, they make the point of arguing. So now this point of argumentation 
and false arguments is being raised up. I'm not going to go into tafsir and explanation of the other verses. I want to stick to, but I'm just going to very quickly just give you a translation of the, because to understand one ayah, you have to understand what's before it, what's after it, and then how this can all be seen. وَنَادَ فِرْعَوْنُ لِقَوْمِهِ And Fir'aun called upon his people, يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرِ And this is also about how the people, the people that were on the falsehood, they fooled their people and their followers. So this is a big part of this. وَنَادَ فِرْعَوْنُ لِقَوْمِهِ And remember when Fir'aun made a call to his people, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ O people, أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرِ Do I not have the mulk, the kingdom of Egypt? هَذِهِ أَنْهَارِ don't you see these rivers following under, flowing under my control? Do you not see? Is this better what I have? Or uh, than these, these people, uh, this, as the translation here says, this miserable wretch, okay? Who are muhin when they are disregarded. And they can barely express themselves because Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had an issue talking. فَلَوْلَا أُلْقِيَ عَلَيْهِ أَسَّاوِرَةٌ مِّن ذَهَبٍ So why does not, you know, bracelets of gold come down to them? وَجَامَعَهُ مَلَائِكَ And why don't the angels come down with him? مُقْتَرِنِينَ uh, One after the other. If Musa is right, then why doesn't this happen? So what happened? Now he fooled his people. فَاسْتَخَفَ قَوْمُهُ فَعَطَاؤُهُ So then he fooled his people and they followed him. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ This was because they were a wrongdoing people. فَلَمَّا آسَفُونَ And when they provoked us, إِنْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ فَأَغْرَكْنَاهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Then we took our revenge from them and we drowned them all. Okay? فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ سَلَفًا And we made them a precedent. Okay? مَثَلًا لِلْآخِرِينَ An example for the people that would come. So here it is in the Qur'an. It comes now as an example. That look, what happened to the people before. وَلَمْ And start, you know, Bani Israel starts with Musa and ends with Isa. So now, وَلَمَّا ذُرِبَ ibn Maryam مَثَلًا When the example of Isa is given to your people, meaning the Quraysh, إِذَا قَوْمُكَ مِنْهُمْ يَصِدُّونَ Okay, then your people, they oppose. And they say the same thing the people said. Are these better or are these better? But in a different way, قَالُوا أَآلِهَتُنَا خَيْرٌ أَمْ Is our gods better or he? Meaning, he is here referring to Prophet Muhammad or it's referring to Prophet Isa. The example of Prophet Isa is given, look, he's born without a father. They're like, oh, is this better or Isa better? Or is this better or Muhammad and his followers better? مَا ضَرَبُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَدَلَ They don't argue with you except just for the sake of argument. بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ خَصِيمُونَ They are just a people who just like to argue. إِنْ هُوَ He is not إِلَّا except عَبْدٌ عَنْ عَمْنَ عَلَيْهِ Except a servant we have blessed upon, given blessings upon him. وَجَعَلْنَاهُ مَثَلًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِلِ And we made him an example for Bani Israel. What? That, that a, a, a child can be born without a father, this is a sign that the Day of Judgment is coming. That the Day of Judgment rather can come. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا عَبْدٌ عَنْ عَمْنَا As you'll see some of the Mufassirin say, Abd here is referring to none other than the Prophet himself. He's not إِلَّا عَبْدٌ He's our slave. Anamna alayhi, and we have made him as, as an example, and جَعَلْنَاهُ مَثَلًا and we made him as an example li Bani Israel. This is the example that they were looking for. They were looking for this prophet from before. Or Abdan Amna alayhi is referring to Isa والسلام, which fits better with the context. and if we had willed, if Allah wanted, la جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ مَلَكًا we would have made, instead of you, angels. They were already saying, why are you placing this earth, man on earth? One of the meanings is, we could have been that. So Allah is saying, yes, that could have been the case. If we wanted, we could have done that. Fil ardi mukhallafoon. Yahlufoon. They would be then successors on the earth. They would have the khilafah on the earth. 
And then now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ Okay. Indeed, he is the knowledge of the hour, is the direct and obvious and straightforward forward translation. But now, is the who, he, or it, innahu is referring to the Prophet Muhammad, innahu is referring to Isa alayhi innahu is referring to Quran, because there is some ambiguity. So, therefore, there is a qira'a, a different qira'a that makes the issue clear. Now, having said this, now before I come to how this all now interconnects from the top to the bottom in different ways, right? I'm, before I talk about that, I want to talk about the different tafsirs and then we'll inshallah come back to this point over here. Okay? So what do the different mufassirin, what do they say? Okay. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ قَالَ ابْنِ عَبَّاسِ حَسَنْ وَمُجَاهِدْ وَقَطَادَ وَإِنْ دَاحِكْ إِنْ إِبْنْ زَيْدْ إِشَّارَ بِهِ إِلَى عِيسَى عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ They say, including Ibn Abbas, whose opinion can never ever be disregarded, that this is referring to Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. فَقَالَتْ فِرْقَةٌ إِلَى Muhammad. Any group of them said, no, إِنَّهُ لَا Because the Prophet said, between me and the hour is like this. So it could be referring to the Qur'an, as we read in one tafsir. It could be referring to Prophet Muhammad. But Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh says, it is referring to Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. And then, uh, وَإِلَى الْقُرْآنِ قَالَ حَسَنُ عَيْدًا وَقَطَادَةُ إِلَى الْقُرْآنِ And some of them they said it's referring to it is the knowledge of the hour. It or he is or it is the knowledge of the hours. Could be referring to three things. Either the Qur'an or Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Isa alayhi salatu wa sallam وَقِرْعَاتُ الْجُمْهُرَ النَّاسِ And the recitation of the majority of the people the Qira'atul Amma is لَعِلْمٌ بِالْكَسْرَ عَيْن وَسَكُون لَام Okay, so the Ayn has a Kasra عِلْمُ But, because Ibn Abbas had the opinion, this is referring to Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, and so he gives a variant to the general meaning, to make clear the meaning of the general Qira'a, وَقِرَاءِ ibn Abbas, Abu Huayra, Qitada, Abu Malk, Ghaffari, Mujahid, uh, and so on and so forth. إِنَّهُ لَعَلَّامُ لَعَلَّامُ Indeed, he is a sign. So from ilm, knowledge, you also get alam, which means a sign, a mark. Okay, so they read it instead of إِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ لِلسَّاعَةِ they read it as إِنَّهُ وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَّامُ لِلسَّعَةِ Indeed, he is a mark of the hour. The Prophet Isa والسلام, is the mark of the hour. Now, obviously, when you have verses like this, you're going to have many people thinking very hard that uh, what is this referring to? So let's look at what some of the other uh, Mufassirin have said in this regard. Okay? And then, uh, وَإِنَّهُ And this is Al-Muhit, uh, the Tafsir Al-Muhit. إِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَى It is يَعُودْ عَلَىٰ إِيسَى إِذْحَارْ فِي Okay, and then he explains the grammar. And then he talks about the same people, that how they would read this. خروجه للعلم الساعة يدل على قرب القيام قرب القيامة وخروجه شرط من أشراطها ونزول من سماء من في آخر الزمان. So he is saying that this is referring to because the it is referring to something mentioned before. So what is mentioned before? Isa alayhi salatu was mentioned before. 
because Musa was mentioned, then Isa is mentioned. So that is most probably what it's referring to. But it could be referring to the Quran. It could be referring to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, but we're going to come back to this. Okay, now he says ilm here means knowledge of the nearness of the hour. Ilmul qurbul lissa'a. Qurb nearness. Is made mahzuf. It's not been mentioned, but it is understood that he, Isa, is the knowledge of the nearness of the hour. Okay? But as you notice, unless you say alam, that he is a sign of the hour, it's not as clear. So with the word ilm, there can be tawjihad towards Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, there can be tawjihad towards Quran, there can be tawjihad with Isa. وسلم. But if you go with the Qiraf Isa of Ibn Abbas and the others, then it becomes more clear. It is referring clearly the general recitation leaves it more open, but the specific recitation of Ibn Abbas makes it more clear who what and who is being mentioned here specifically. Okay, so just keep this in mind. Now, uh, look at this now. Uh, this is the uh, tafsir basit. Innahu la ilmu lissa'a fala tamtaroon biha. Okay. Qala ibn Abbas wa mufassirun ay nuzul Isa alayhi salatu wasalam min al-sama min shart al-sa'a wa ahwaluha. Okay. And the same point is being made that he is what? It is the coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam from the sky and the conditions of the hour and and the the condition of the hour and its uh, situation around it and then if you see ya'ud ila al-qur'an so some of them they said innahu ta'ud ila al-qur'an yadullu ala al-maji' as-sa'a aw bihi ilm ahwal as-sa'a ahwalaha qawlu la ilm lis-sa'a wa qala ibn qutayba so, with this Qur'an, you can get to know the portents of the hour, the signs of the hour. And that is one of the meanings of this verse that you can come to. Okay? Now, uh, Abu Sa'ud, uh, he now uh, says, لَعِلْمُ السَّعَ أَيْ إِنَّهُ بِنَزُولِ شَرْطْ مِنْ أَشْرَاطِهَا And then he says وَتَسْمِيَتُهُ عِلْمًا It's been called عِلْم لِحُصُولِهِ أَوْ بِحُدُوثِهِ بِغَيْرِ أَبْبٍ Okay, so now he takes it from another perspective. He says that because Isa alayhi salatu wasalam had no father, right? And because Dalil ala sihatil ba'ath. This is proof that there is the day of judgment. So, innahu la ilmu sa'a. He is the knowledge of the hour. If somebody can be born without a fa father, that is proof that some that every human being can also be resurrected. Okay? Uh, and that was the biggest thing he says. Okay? Mu'zim ma yankruhu al kufr min amur al waqi'a fi sa'a. Wa quri'a la ilmun ay allama. He says, ilm here means allama, as is the qiraat of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu. Wa quri'a lil ilmi, wa quri'a, and then he goes on describing the same uh, issue. Okay. Let's go to another tafsir. This is Zamakshiri. Innahu. Remember, Zamakshiri, he's the master of Arabic language and Arabic grammar. And even though he was a Mu'tazilite, but his tafsir is considered Ummahatu tafsir because of his knowledge of Arabic language. And we have, a, of course, inshallah, Allah will give him all the rewards. Okay, so he says that. Isa والسلام, is the knowledge of the hour, meaning he is the knowledge of its conditions of the coming of the hour. Okay? And so this is what uh, Imam Zamakshiri says, amongst other things. Uh, let's continue, inshallah. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ 
وإنه أي إيسا لعلم الساعة تعلم بنزوله the knowledge of his coming down okay so he says the coming down of Isa is what is being mentioned here specifically who says this in tafsir Jalalain Imam Sayyuti وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ وَإِنَّ نَزُولَ عِيسَى عَلَيْهِ سَلَةُ وَسَلَمْ يَدُّلُّ عَلَىٰ قُرْبِ وَقُوءِ السَّعَةِ So the coming down, his knowledge of his coming down is what is being meant by the knowledge of Jesus or his knowledge, knowledge of him, meaning his coming down. This is the knowledge of him that uh, is one of the major aspects, of course, about his uh, personality. إِنَّ نَزُولَ عِيسَى عَلَيْهِ سَلَةُ وَسَلَمْ Okay, and so this is proof of the nearness of the hour is the coming down of Isa uh, Then Fatul Qadir, okay, Imam Shawkani, Innahu la ilmu sa'a, Qala Mujahid Dahik Suddi, Anna al Murad, Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, wa anna kharujahu mimma ya'lam bihi qiyamu sa'a. And it is about the knowledge of the coming of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, the coming out, and that is the one of the conditions of the hour, right? Nuzuluhu min al-sama'i yukbil tamam al-sa'a. The coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, qabil al-tamam al-sa'a, before the complete uh, uh, coming of the completion of the hour, uh, the coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay, and then uh, the next uh, verse, uh, the next uh, tafsir, غريب uh, Quran. Okay, these are this is غريب the the strange aspects of Quran. You can say, إنه لعلم الساعة أي نزول المصيح عليه الصلاة والسلام يعلم به قرب الساعة. Okay, uh, and then ومن كرع لعلام لعلام للساعة. This is another qira as we've been discussing. And it means, وَإِنَّهُ يَعْنِي أَلَّامَ أَلَّامَ Meaning a sign, وَدَلِيلٌ And proof. He is the proof of the hour. And one of the meanings of knowledge is proof. Something is not knowledge unless it has proof. If it's proofless, it's not, it's knowledgeless, right? So it's not knowledge, it's not considered knowledge unless it has proof. And so, the proof of the hour is the coming down of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So it's an inverse way of looking at the situation. Okay. إِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَةِ مَسْتِرْ عِلْمْ هِيَ كِرَعَاتُ الْجُمْهُورِ وَكِرَعَةِ وَقُرِئَ And it is also read in the way we've already discussed with a fatha on the ayn. Okay. بِفَتْحَ عَيْن وَلَامْ لَعَلَّامٌ لِلسَّعَةِ and he is a sign, a mark of the hour. Okay. Let us continue, inshallah. So, innahu la'ilmu sa'a and durul sumun. Innahu la'ilmu mushur. Okay, so, the, you know, nuzul al-akhir zaman wa qila. And then it also said that it's about, it's about the Quran, he says. And, aw huwa alamatun ala qurbiha. So he is a sign of its nearness. Okay. Waqila and it is said Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam minhu ba'ithu ana wa sa'atain kahatain. Sa'atu kahatain. Me and the hour have been like two, two, like these two fingers. Okay. We're very near each other. So either the word il means proof. He is the proof of the hour. Okay. And he is the condition of the hour. His coming down is the condition of the hour. Or it can mean it is, the, it is the Qur'an is the knowledge of the hour. Or the Prophet's coming is the knowledge of the hour. So all these meanings exist. So now, later on, when we go back to, uh, when we go back to looking at the, how the first part and the second part and how different Qur'as can give different dimensions, then inshallah this will be interesting to you. Okay. قوله إنه لعلم ال إنه لعلم مشهور. Okay, so this is the مشهور or the قراءة العامة. This is the normal reading. Okay, that you have. And then he quotes interestingly enough 
other verses of the Quran that have the similar, you can say, uh, flavor to it, the savor, the similar meanings to it. So he quotes, for example, "Iktarabat uh, linnasi hisabuhum." The hour has come near. So the word "near" qurb is used. Okay, "Wa iktarabat sa'a So the hour has come. So the with the word "hour" is the word "near." Okay, with the word hour is near in the Quran. And with the word hour is knowledge. So he kind of combines it and says, it is what knowledge? It is the knowledge of qurbu sa'a, the knowledge of the coming of the hour. Okay. Uh, and then he takes it from that uh, perspective and he also says what he uh, that, uh, that he mentions the other things the other Mufassirin mention. Over here, I'll mention something interesting just as a side point also. That Rabul uh, Quran and Nihas, he says, Abu Jafar, and then he goes on the Arabic, Mazhab ibn Abbas, wa Abu Huraira, wa Malik, Mujahid, Dahik, is referring to. Li Isa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma'na nuzuluhu wa qawlul akhir huwa qawlul hasan. Okay, so now why innahu la'ilmu sa'a? He says something interesting. Fi hadha dalil ala annahu idha nuzila alayhi salatu wa salam, Isa alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Isa alayhi salatu wa sallam is coming down, rufiat mihna. All work and professions will be finished. There will be no working after that. Lam taqbal ahad min ahad tawba. And he is saying at that time, the hour, it's like the hour has already come, basically. There will be no, it'll be very clear to close, or it'll be that time where tawba is not accepted from anyone. Because the unseen doors have already opened. And the general rule of Quran for that is that the judgment is made. So he says, tawba is not accepted. وفي الحديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما يدل على ذلك and there is a hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that points to this point okay هو قوله فيكسر and إسا عليه about إسا عليه سلطة وسلم يكسر النصليب ويقتل الخنزير and he will kill the pigs he will break the cross and there will be nothing left and then قل قل أرض أفلاس كبدها the meaning, uh, the meaning of that is, uh, 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 فَفِي هَذَا أَنَّهُ لَا مِنْهُ أَحَدْ زَكَاةً He says, this is proof that no one will be giving zakat, and I'm going to show you proof of that in another, uh, just in a second, okay? وَأَنَّ مِحْنَدْ قَدْ رُفِعَتْ وَقُرْبَةِ And uh, because of the hour coming near, now there's nobody going to be working, okay? And what will be happening is that, as you will see, uh, in the some of the uh, explanations, uh, uh, where it says, uh, "Allahumma salli ala Muhammad," uh, okay, and where it says, "Idil ayyatrukun ma alqa min al qunuz." So there will be many of these, you can say, qunuz treasures of the world that will come out. Uh, from the world, uh, and then he says, "Ma fil ard kibdan," that that things will come out from the uh, from the under the earth. Ida zulzil, ida zulzilat al ardu zilzalaha wa akhrajat al ardu athqalaha. And when the earth will bring out its 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 weight, meaning the treasures within the earth. So there's two things: the hour. Ida the shaking of the earth, Ida Zulzilat al Ardu Zilzalaha, and when the earth brings out its weight, meaning the human beings and the dead bodies. But he is saying, okay, what uh it means uh it also means amongst human beings, but one of the meanings is that the canoes, the treasures of the world will come out. Anyway, there are riwayat that also point to this, as I will just show you. One of them, لا تقوم الساعة حتى ينزل فيكم ابن مريم until ابن مريم comes down حكما مقصدا until he comes down as a just ruler. Okay, فيكسر الصليب ويقتل الخنزير. He will kill, break the cross, kill the pigs. 
وَيَدْعُوا جِزْيَ And there will be no jizya. Okay. And then what did he say? وَيُفِيدَ الْمَالِ حَتَّى يَقْبَلُوا أَحَدٍ And there will be so much money in abundance that no one will accept it. And so he's using this as proof that there will be little to no work to do at that time. Everybody will know the hour is coming and then the wind will come. And, and all of these narrations that you're looking at here have to do with the same issue, but I'm not going to go into all of that right now. Okay, so now uh, I don't uh, want to give further analysis in terms of uh, the breakdown of the ayah, but I will point out only uh, one thing, uh, and that is that ilm itself also means mark or alama. Okay, and this has been mentioned here. If you go through the lexicon, it's very uh, large meaning of the word ilm has many, many means shu'ur to have awareness of. The word ilm means something that is verified knowledge, but as you see here, it also means a thing or a mark or a trace or a track which one guides himself. So ilm is that thing by which you can guide yourself. So he is that thing by which you can guide yourself to the hour is another meaning that you can have. But he also quotes here. وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّعَى Meaning, verily he, Isa is appearing and descending to the earth, shall be a sign. So the word ilm can also mean a sign itself. But the word ilm doesn't generally mean sign. Right? The word ilm generally means knowledge. So that's why there are there is a one specific qiraat that uses the word إِنَّهُ لَعْلَامٌ لِسَّعَى He is a mark or a sign of the hour. Okay? And so now, now let's take this from the perspective that I mentioned just before. If you take the word ilm to mean ilm, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ Indeed, he is the knowledge of the hour, if you take it in that sense, okay? And not in the sense of specifically Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, because with ilmun, it leaves it open more or less. إِنَّهُ he is if you take it in its general context from as you're reading the context here this is now talking about the prophet's relationship with his people and so one meaning of this in its general sense okay wa innahu la generally in the quran the who the it is the knowledge of the hour is referring to the prophet sallallahu and rather the quran okay is referring to the quran is referring to the quran the quran is the knowledge of the hour and the coming of the prophet is the knowledge of the hour and if you connect it with the ayat after 61 62 63 which talks about isa alayhi salatu wasalam and what happened with him he said, in Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum, and he is the knowledge of the hour. So you can say there are two prophets that are knowledge of the hour, or they are marks of the hour, but innahu la'ilmu sa'a, and with him is the knowledge of the hour, meaning Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With him is the knowledge of the nearness of the hour. If you take it in its general qira, it's easier to go with ilm, referring to the Prophet and the Quran. If you take it in the sense of connecting more easily with 61, 62, 63, 64, and on, then إِنَّهُ لَعَلَّامٌ sa'a is what is really the essence of this. As I said, this was the opinion of Ibn Abbas. This was also the qira of Ibn Abbas. So that is the one that makes the more what it is actually in the, the overall writing theme of the surah is this. But it may also because the Quran has many dimensions and one ayah can have many meanings. So it is also innahu la'il musa'a can be referring to the other aspects. And that fits better with the context of that argument that we were talking about in the beginning of the surah. They do nothing but argue with the previous part prophets. And now they're arguing with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu But he is the one who has the knowledge of the hour or he is the knowledge of the hour, meaning referring to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and that is, so there are many ways you can read this. And I'm only over here sharing one of these aspects. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. I hope this helped uh, and benefited all of you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.